Hi everyone and welcome back to another video on my channel. And if you're new here, my name is James and you're watching Wonderful World. And with me today is my ball python, Jerry. And today is the second video in a series of videos on how to set up and care for your first snake for absolute beginners. And Jerry is a good co-host for this video because in the previous video, I mentioned that your new snake will most likely be a baby and you'll need to be prepared for it to grow larger. When Jerry was new, he was just a tiny baby and could fit in the palm of my hand. And he could have been comfortably set up in a 20 gallon tank. And now two years later, he's grown much bigger and he's almost ready to outgrow the 40 gallon that he currently lives in. So at some point in the future, everything you invested in that first setup will have to be upgraded to something larger. Anyway, let's talk about how to care for your new snake. So you've done your research and you have your enclosure all set up and ready to go. So what do you do when you bring your new snake home? It's a really exciting thing. And the first thing you're going to want to do is handle your snake and check on it all the time. So take a moment and do that. But the first thing you need to do when you introduce your snake to its new enclosure is just completely leave it alone for at least a week and better than that too. So during that time, don't take your snake out and handle it. Don't poke around the enclosure and bother it and don't feed it. It needs that time to feel safe and secure and get situated into its new enclosure. And if you do that, the socialization and feeding that follows will go much better. The first thing that your snake will probably do when you introduce it to the enclosure is roam around and explore the perimeter of the enclosure. But at that point, it will probably retreat to a hide or bury itself in the substrate and you won't see it very often. So don't worry, that's completely normal, especially for baby snakes. So after a week or two of settling into the enclosure, you want to give your snake some food. And as far as what size prey item to give your snake, it should be no bigger than the widest part of the snake's body. For many snakes, that will be pinky mice that you buy frozen at the pet store. And what you want to do is just thaw out the frozen mice and get them to a temperature of 85 to 90 degrees. And this is where the infrared heat gun that you uh, have to check the temperatures in the enclosure comes in really handy because just like checking the temperatures in the enclosure, you can use it to check the temperatures of the thawed out rodents. Now, one thing I didn't mention in the first video is that you'll probably want to buy a pair of feeding tongs. And I would show you a pair of feeding tongs, but right now would not be a smart time to be waving around a pair of feeding tongs because I don't want Jerry to decide it's time to eat while I'm making this video. But what you do is just gently hold the mouse in front of the snake's mouth and don't make any fast or jerky move movements. Just let the snake smell the mouse and most likely it will bite right into it. If it doesn't, just set the mouse down in front of your snake and leave the room, maybe dim the lights and come back in a half hour. And most likely you'll find that your snake ate the mouse. And if it didn't, don't panic, don't worry. Just dispose of that mouse and try again another day or two later. And don't refreeze and use the same mouse that you had already thawed out. 
It might seem like a waste, but that can make your snake sick. Make a routine that your snake will learn for how and when you feed it. An adult and juvenile snakes can be fed once every seven days. An, an older adult can be fed even every 10 days. And babies need to be fed a little more often every five days. Keeping the enclosure clean is very important for the health of your snake. You need to clean and disinfect the water bowls every day. And snakes don't poop every day. It takes them a while to completely digest a, a mouse. But when they do, you need to keep your eyes open for when you need to spot clean the enclosure. And about every two or three months, you'll need to completely uh, replace the substrate. And that's a good time to completely clean and disinfect the entire cage and all of the hides and the decor. And you might want to invest in a plastic tub that you can put your snake in temporarily while you clean the enclosure. And make sure that you use a plastic tub with clips that lock the lid tight. Don't use a tub where the top uh, snaps down on top of it because a snake can easily escape from that. If you've set up the enclosure well and you do all of those things that I just mentioned well, then you're doing a good job for providing your snake's need for food, water, and shelter. So let's talk about shedding. As your snake grows, it will periodically shed its skin. And baby snakes can shed their skin as often as every four weeks. Before your snake sheds, it will retreat to a hide and not want to come out. And, and it can do this for a period of seven to 10 days. And at this time, your snake's eyes will become cloudy and its skin will become dull. And you can see that here with my uh, boa constrictor ray. Ray is a little bit unusual. Most snakes in this condition would go into a hide and not want to come out. And at this time, they definitely don't want to eat. But Ray always prefers to be out in the open. Then your snake's eyes and skin will suddenly become clear again, and they will most likely shed their skin that evening. And during all of this time, it's really important to make sure that the humidity in the enclosure is correct, if not 10 degrees higher than usual. If you have a snake that is on aspen bedding, then this is a good time to include a humid hide, which can be just a deli container with a lid and a hole cut in the side and some damp sphagnum moss inside. And if you have a snake that is not on aspen bedding, then this is a time when I miss the enclosure in the evening as well as the morning. A good healthy shed for a snake comes off all in one piece and it includes the eye caps and the tail. And I should tell you that if your first snake is going to be a ball python, ball pythons are notorious for having bad sheds. And I don't know if you can see, but Jerry's last shed was not the best and he has a little bit of retained shed right here on the top of his neck but that'll come off the next time he sheds. Now snakes don't need affection or companionship. They really actually would prefer to be left alone. But your snake's life with you will be much less stressful for it if it is well socialized and accustomed to being handled. And the best time to start this is when they're young. 
And I think for a lot of brand new beginner snake keepers, this is probably the most stressful thing. You just got this new snake that you've always wanted, and now you find that you're a little bit scared to pick it up and handle it. And I have a previous video on how to pick up and handle your snake without being afraid, and so I'll put a link to that in the corner. But the thing you need to keep in mind is that your snake is scared too. Especially baby snakes. They're very vulnerable and they do see everything as a predator. And the process of socialization can be a long process and take a lot of time and patience. And really, it's a subject that could be an entire video by itself. But basically, this is how it can work. Probably the first thing you want to do is just let your snake get used to your presence in front of the enclosure. Sit in front of the enclosure and let it get used to seeing you. Maybe just sit and read a book. And from there you can take a step up and let it get used to your hands being near it. So just open the enclosure and set your hand in and just let your hands sit still in front of your snake. And if you want, you could let your snake sniff your hand or crawl on top of it and just leave it there. And from there, you can step up to picking up your snake and handling it. Now, especially if it's a colubrid snake like a corn snake or a king snake, it's going to be squirmy and try to get away from you. Or if it's a ball python, it might make a bluff strike at you. And this is what scares most people. But this is the important time to just stay calm and pick up your snake. Because once it's out of the enclosure, it will calm down. And from there, you can leave the handling sessions short, just five or ten minutes and then extend the time that you handle your snake gradually from there. But you don't want to handle your snake right before or for 24 to 48 hours after it's eaten or when it's going into shed. And handling your snake every day isn't a good idea anyway because handling them too much can be stressful at least until they are a well-socialized adult. So yes, having your first snake means that there's a lot to learn, and some of that comes with experience and time. And some of that brings frustration and worry. But just because you've got your snake, don't stop doing research. Snakes are very long-lived animals, and so your snake is going to be with you for many years. And this gives you lots of time to continue doing research. A lot of the points I've made in both of these videos I covered in a very general, basic way. But now would be the time for you to start diving deeper, and looking at some of those concepts in a lot more detail. If your snake isn't eating, then do more research on how to fix that. If your snake is having trouble shedding, then research that. Maybe your snake is growing and you're wondering if it's time to move it up to the next size rodent, so do more research on that. But I can tell you that Watching a baby snake grow into an adult and learn to trust you and have a bond with you is one of the most incredible experiences a person can have. So if you're a new snake keeper, I wish you luck on your journey with your new snake. If I can be of help or answer any questions at all, I'd be happy to do that. Just leave me a comment in the comment section below. And I do have a lot of previous videos on snake husbandry, so you might want to watch those. And definitely subscribe to the channel 
and ring the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.